Traditionally, the first thing we do when learning a new language is to write a Hello World application. If you're not familiar with Hello World, it's just a simple application that outputs the text Hello World. It's really easy, and that is part of the point, so that we can get our feet wet writing an actual application, even though it's a very simple application. Now, with our particular Hello World app, we need to delve just a little bit into the .NET framework because that's where all the goodies are to interface with a console window or basically any other type of application that we have. C Sharp is the language that we use to uh, access those goodie pieces in the .NET framework to write our applications. You can think of C Sharp as a uh, chest of tools, and you can think of the .NET framework as all the pieces needed to fit an engine together. And of course, we can't do that without the tools. So in order to write an application, we have all the goodies within the .NET framework, but we have to fit those goodies together with C Sharp code. So that's kind of the relationship between C Sharp and .NET. And uh, we first need to learn how to write text to a console window. Well, first we need to understand that the .NET framework is completely object-oriented. And if you're not familiar with object-oriented programming, that's okay, because we live in an object-oriented world. You can think of any noun, you know, a person, place, or thing, and that is an object in our world. And we organize all of the different objects that we come in contact with based upon a category or a classification. You know, we have a certain class of objects called vehicles, but even then we have little sub classifications of, of vehicles for uh, automobiles and trains and airplanes and boats and things like that. So we organize all these objects, and you can kind of call them data, we organize all of these things as classifications. Well, we do the same thing in programming. We have, like, say, a console window, and we want to represent that console window in our code. So we have an object or a class to represent that console window. In fact, I'm going to run this application that we have up here. This is the project that we created yesterday. There's nothing been added to this project, but of course we are going to add just a single line of code. Uh, but I'm going to run it for you, and I'm going to press F5. You can also go up to this green arrow to start debugging, or you can go to the debug menu and then start debugging. But the shortcut key is F5. Now, this actually isn't going to do anything. It's just going to display a window, and then the window is going to immediately go away, just like that. And that's because a console application is meant to be run from a command line. That, you know, that's what a console application is. So whenever we try to run our application through Visual Studio, it's going to run our application and then immediately go away. But sometimes we want to see the output on the screen, you know, because you know, what good is that while we are developing? Because, you know, we want to see what's on the screen and we don't want to run our app from a console. Uh, we can run our app with Control F5. This will run our application and it will leave it up for us, waiting for us to close it. It says pressing the key to continue. Uh, we didn't write any code to do that. That's just Visual Studio doing that for us. And of course, whenever we uh, press any key, that window is going to go away and our app is going to close. Let me pull this window back up. This is the window that we want to write text to, but we need some way to do that through our code. Well, we have an object that represents this window, and we can use that in order to write text to it. Now, I say the word object, but that's really not correct, because what we are going to use is a class called console. Now, we're not going to talk about classes until lesson 10 or 11, so I'm just going to refer to this as an object, because it kind of works as an object, but it's really what's called a static class, which uh, I don't even want to get into right now. So it's wrong, but I'm just going to call this an object. Now, an object can have two things. It can have properties or it can have methods. Let's think about a car. We have just, you know, a plain Jane car. It has a color. It has a year that it was made. It has a make and a model. These things are properties. They describe the car object that we are talking about. 
And a car also has methods. Methods are something that happens. They are some type of action that performs on the object or with the object. In the case of a car, we have methods that can accelerate or decelerate the car. It can also change directions as well as, you know, some other things. So that is kind of the mentality mentality that we are needing to get into as far as object-oriented programming is concerned because an object can have properties or have methods and we want to write some text to our console window so that is a, an action that's a method so we need to find some way to access some of the console objects methods and we do that with a period just a dot so we have console and then we type the dot and then magic happens this little window that has just popped up well we even saw it before with the console but this is this is wonderful this is intellisense microsoft invented intellisense a long time ago it's been in use in visual studio since as long as I can remember, and I got started with Visual Studio back uh, with VB6. That was horrible, but um, the, the IntelliSense was available back then. Basically, what IntelliSense is giving us is every property and method that we can access from the console object that we have here. And things are organized by properties or methods. Properties have this little uh, window with, I guess that's a hand pointing to it. That's a property. Methods have this little action box. There's also some events. Events are things that take place, um, you know, based upon certain criteria. But that is the little lightning bolt icon. So those are events. So this is a list of everything that we can access from console. Now we can go through this list and try to pick out what exactly we want. Uh, we can look at just the methods. We have move buffer area. That doesn't really make much sense to write text to it. We have open standard error. Once again, that doesn't have anything about writing text to it. But we can go through this list or we can just start typing now logically we would be writing text to a console window so let's just start typing the word write and IntelliSense is going to filter that list down according to what we write so we've started with WR and IntelliSense is going through that entire list and searching each one of those properties events and methods to find anything that has WR in it, and then it filters it based upon that. So we have two methods. We have write and write line. And IntelliSense can give us information about both of these methods. If we move our mouse over write, it says that it writes the specified string value to the standard output stream. Uh, that's kind of uh, programmer speak for saying it writes text to the console window. Uh, and let's look at write line. It writes the text representation of the specified array of objects followed by the current line terminator. Uh, that's programmer speak for it writes text to a console window and then ha uh, puts a carriage return at the end of the line. So uh, both of these methods will allow us to write text to the console window. So let's just do console write and this is a method and in order to call a method and by calling a method you are executing it and in c sharp you call a method by using the method name console.write and then open parentheses and whenever we open the parentheses intellisense is going to give us a bunch of more uh, information that we can use. Now, I, I want you to ignore IntelliSense right now. Uh, we want to do what's called passing an argument to the right method. We are basically passing data so that the right method can do something with that data and do something with the console window. We want to pass a string value. A string is just a string of characters, or you can call it text. I mean, that's really the most simplistic way of saying a string it's just a bunch of text and we do that using the double quote so we want to pass in some text that says 
hello world. And let's make it an exclamation. And then we want to close this string with another set of double quotes. So anything from the beginning double quote to the end double quote is considered a string. It's text. So we are sending this text to the console's write method. And then the write method is going to take that data and then do something with the console window, which is going to write it to the window. And then we close the parentheses because that is all that we want to pass to the write method. And then we need to terminate this line of code with a semicolon. In C sharp, you have to uh, terminate each statement, which is what this is. A statement is kind of the smallest piece of an application. You can think of it, you know, as a sentence in a book. That's a, a pretty good uh, analogy. A, a statement in programming is just one small little piece that fits into a larger application, just like a sentence fits into a larger book. So we have to terminate each statement with a semicolon, which is what we have done here. And all we have to do now is run our application and see if we are actually going to write this text, hello world, to the console window. So I'm going to press control F5. And there we go. We have hello, comma, world, and then press any key to continue. Now, the reason why this is all on one line is because we used the write method. If we use write line, it's going to write the text, hello, world, and then it's going to put a carriage return at the end of the line for us. So if we were going to run this again, which I will do with control F5, we have hello, world, and then press any key to continue is on the next line. And that's pretty simple, right? So we are going to end this lesson with that. We want to keep things just a little bit simple because tomorrow we are going to talk about more types of data and variables. We talked about the string, which is the hello world that we pass to the right line method. Uh, but there are other types of data that we need to cover. And over the next few lessons, we will be doing just that. So I will see you tomorrow.